what's up guys in this video i'll show you how to procedurally create this scene in unreal engine 5.2 using procedural content generation we'll create this uh, rock scattering scene in which they are non-colliding and also another thing we'll do is actually make sure that this rock doesn't collide with the cross in there and for this we'll use a procedural content generation framework and this would be a tutorial in progress uh, which we will build on the next tutorial as well all right to get started what we'll do is we'll go to the file new level and then i'll start with the basic blank level and then i'll hit on create and you can see there's a basic blank level in here um yeah you can just navigate around um, making sure that I don't have any extra stuff added so I'll be, go ahead and delete this floor plan then go into this landscape mode and I'll go ahead and create this 7x7 seven seven, uh, quads landscape is the smallest one that we can use and then go back to the selection mode um, now we have this basic uh, landscape and on which we want to create the some sort of scene in here as well Next, you can see that I have uh, some 3D assets downloaded from the Megascan. So I have some uh, grass, some rocks and stuff. I'll show you here in the uh, way you can download this. So I basically went into Quixel and then basically added a gravestone or cross that I found in here. Um, and then for the grass also yeah you can see that this is the one that i downloaded the mossy gravestone one um yeah and the i basically have downloaded and then added to my project um the another thing i did was for the grass so i basically downloaded the european spindle grass i think um yeah it was already i had downloaded so go ahead and you can download any grass you want actually it doesn't have to be European uh, spindle glass um, and then yellow archangel was another one so I basically uh, downloaded and added to my project uh, you can see in here after you add uh, it gets populated inside your content browser um, now I will basically grab this cross and drag it and put it onto my scene it is pretty small for now so i will go ahead and then uh, maybe change the scale to three by three by three um, after that is done uh, what happens is um, uh, i can basically oh i forgot that i we actually need to make sure that we need to have a procedural content generation uh, plugin enabled so make sure that you're clicking on it and if it asks you to restart restart your engine um just to get the procedural content generation actually enabled in your scene next i'll right click in here and then create a new pcg graph you can name whatever you want i'll just say pcg uh, grave um, uh, tutorial and then i can go ahead and then um, basically double click on it and you can see that i have these two nodes Basically, um, you might have watched my intro to PCZ video as well. So we'll be using this uh, using this landscape. So we want to populate something on this landscape. So we'll start from the landscape and then type in surface sampler. And surface sampler is a way for you to see the sample points. So I'll click on D for debug and nothing happens. The reason is because I have not added a PCZ to the scene so once I add it you can see that there are like cubes of um, the sample uh, points that we can see uh, within the PCZ framework um, and uh, for this first part we want to actually populate some grass so we might need more points than what is given to do that what we can do is we can change the points per square meter to maybe 25 and still nothing happens that's because we also need to change the value for the point extent and I'll show you here like when you change the point extent value that the point will change so we'll basically decrease the uh, point extent to maybe 10 by 10 by 10 and you can see a ton of points added um, to our scene 
and this is where we want to actually populate some uh, grass or plant or tree whatever you think um, uh, feel free to you know uh, make it your own uh, in terms of so from the out I will go ahead and drag and I'll just type in the static mesh spawner so a static mesh spawner is the one that actually spawns so I can remove I can type D and then remove that debug mode and then I'll go to the static mesh sampler and then in the mesh entries I'll go ahead and click plus twice so I'm adding like two kinds of plants uh, in the static mesh I will select the European spindle and then maybe on the second one I will go with the yellow arch angle and once that is done uh, we can go back to the scene and you can see that the yeah the plants are populated uh, they are both kind of plants of course it doesn't look that great uh, because there's no variation and also uh, we want to populate it more because it looks like um, also another thing is to change the variation or change the size of the plan we can add this transform point node and from there I can put in there and then remove this by all click and within the transform point uh, we can do D and then debug and we can see the you know the transform points um, I can bring in here and then show you uh, the change uh, in real time um, a few things we can do basically um, we can change the uh, scale to maybe uh, yeah we can go from 0.5 to maybe 4 and then you can see right away the plants are big and maybe appropriate for that you know uh, crush right um, another thing we can do is actually um, I was just testing here to see if it makes sense you know changing the heights and stuff but I I think the 4.0 was still a good uh, value to go with um, especially because I had increased the size of the crush and then the all of the plants are like rotating in the same direction and no variation in in here um, so I want to change that and to do that what you can do is you can go to the transform point and actually um, uh, change the rotation value maybe in the Z direction I'll change the rotation to maybe from 0 to 360 so it's a, the min is 0 and then uh, the max is 360 that means there's a whole lot of variation the another thing also we can do is um, we can change the offset min and max so that would add some jitter so maybe going from minus 10 to 10 now it looks like uh, you know randomly populated grass field okay so we basically create procedurally created this uh, grassy field in here I'll select all of this type C and then comment and say grass the reason I'm doing it because we'll reuse this um, to actually populate the rock within the scene so next we'll populate the rocks uh, what I can do is basically go ahead and select all of this uh, copy them all and then control C and control V and I'll make sure I type in a rock in here so that you're not confused with it and then the on the static mesh spawner will basically delete what we have for the further grass and we'll go ahead and click on plus and then add a static mesh of a rock I'll just type in a rock I think it's uh, starter content has a rock in there and then once uh, that is done of course you can see because you need to plug that uh, landscape with the surface if you see in the background uh, it turned black because uh, the rocks are too big of a size and it's like overly populated so we definitely need to change the density because we use the same one for uh, of that of the grass so I'll go ahead and change the uh, the scale min to maybe 0.2 or yeah 0.2 and then go to 0.7 and that way the rocks are smaller but still uh, it is very densely populated that means we need to change the density as well um, so we'll go to surface sampler um, of course when I did debug I couldn't see it because it was the uh, the bounding box were smaller than the actual mesh itself uh, so we'll go ahead and click on the surface sampler and try to decrease that to maybe 0 
and voila there you go we have a beautiful scene here but one thing if you may notice is all of the rocks are standing straight and tall so uh, maybe we'll go to the transform points and you know we may want to change the rotation to 360 degree in all of the uh, coordinates x y and z now we have randomly populated rock you know of course there is a um, um, some rocks are intersecting uh, that's another thing that we don't want to do actually uh, for this tutorial we want to make sure the rocks are not intersecting and also the rocks are intersecting with the cross which we also want to procedurally remove as well at the moment if you were to debug this transform points you don't see anything so we'll go ahead and use this uh, bounds modifier and the reason uh, the a reason for using it you will notice it shortly here the bounce modifier are actually the points that you would see <clears throat> so it basically helps us to select the bound of the object and I can change the bound min and max so that it we can actually see the you know the stone object so it basically fills the stone object now we can see that um, uh, we see the bounding box so basically we're trying to determine where our stone are colliding now I will disable this static mesh uh, spawner by clicking on E button or E key from the keyboard and then we just play with this stone so we'll work on um, the stone not colliding with itself and there is a function called um, not function there is a node called self pruning so we'll basically use that so that um, it doesn't you know collide with itself so there are no two stones colliding with itself so this is the node uh, new node I guess um, uh, uh, to get acquainted with so I'll go ahead and drag from this uh, out to this in and remove the existing bounds now um, I think it might have already worked uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, so for to enable a node you can type in E also to disable and to enable I can type uh, so I'll remove this debug and then enable this and disable it so, so that you can see see when I'm disabled when there's no self pruning then they are all touching each other but when the self pruning is enabled that means they don't collide with each other so that's very handy and easy in terms of debugging okay and right now my grass is turned off I use the E key so next thing we want to do is procedurally also we don't want the cross to collide with the stone which doesn't happen in natural environment right there's no cross in the stone in the same place uh, so what we want to do is basically procedurally um, d use some logic to create that and to do that what we can do is you can use this get actor data and this actor data we want to reference to this cross um, so we'll do all world actor on the actor filter and it gives you the warning warning is because it is asking for tag and for that what I can do is I can go ahead and add a tag um, in there I can go and type tag and then create a new tag called cross uh, and I will type in a cross because this is of cross now I will go back to the PCZ graph and the get actor data and then I'll type in a cross once I type in then the warning goes away okay now what we want to do is um, there is a function uh, there is a sorry every time I'm seeing function there's a node called difference so using this difference node what we can do is um, uh, basically the source of the difference would be the the self pruning or the rock data and then the the uh, for the difference out we want to out the cross and then we'll uh, yeah connect all of this node so that we only s we connect it back to the static mesh spawner and also make sure the on the difference it is binary and uh, and on the get actor da data uh, we need to uh, actually change it to yeah I was testing here and I was like why is it not working then I forgot that get actor data needs to have the mode to be of single point okay and I'll show you um, uh, in here that well now if I were to move you know 
um, the, the cross to the stone, the stone actually doesn't collide, it actually disappears. Um, and then the basic idea is this is all happening procedurally. So as an artist or somebody, you know, it's easy to iterate on your ideas now. Now I will, I will go ahead and enable the static mesh spawner back and um, you can see that um, yeah now everything is working very procedurally now it doesn't collide um, with the stone so this all of this scene we created procedurally using procedural content generation hopefully this was easy um, I hope to actually build on this tutorial on the next part as well um, actually create some sort of path in here so stay tuned and keep learning and let me know if you have any questions and put them in comment until then i'll see you in the next video